بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا welcome to our series of uh, wonderful women in the history of Islam today we're going to be talking about none other than Aisha may Allah be pleased with her رضي الله تعالى عنها she's of course known as the daughter of the companion Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عنه and when she was quite young there's some debate amongst the scholars as to how young she was when she married the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that not need to concern us uh, at this moment in time. It's an academic scholarly discussion, and maybe at some point in the future we can get into that. But a lot of Islamophobes or people who want to belittle Islam um, attack the age or use the age of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha to attack the Prophet and therefore to attack the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wasallam. It's sufficient to say that this was never really an issue until uh, the last hundred years when some people in order to undermine or try to undermine our faith um, question the age of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and maybe in the video in the details we will share some resources that perhaps people might want to read on that but that's not what we want to focus on in this particular video um, but she was known to be quite significant uh, she was quite a strong character may Allah be pleased with her now we know that she never gave birth to a child but the Quran uh, does describe her as one of the wives of the Prophet mother of the believers Ummahatul Mu'mineen and we know from he, her prodigious memory that uh, she had a sharp intellect she knew and memorized much about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is to be expected because she had an intimate relationship with the Chosen One Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet confided in her repeatedly he told her many things that only she would have known about about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and over time he expressed a special affection for her and it is said that he actually passed away while he was on her lap may Allah be pleased with her there are many books that you can read um, on Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her and about her transmission of hadith but I'm going to mention two for those of you who are interested in Arabic sources one of them is by the famous Badruddin Imam Badruddin Zarkashi which is called Al Isaba Li'iradi ma istarrakathul Aisha ala sahaba There's also one by the famous Jalaluddin Suyuti which is called Ainul Isaba fi istidraki Aisha ala sahaba So this is telling you the idea that um, she would impugn upon the companions sometimes when they said things about the Prophet Sallallahu and she would correct them or give a correct interpretation And so we know a lot about Aisha radiallahu ta'ala as a daughter um, as a wife um, of the Prophet وسلم, but daughter of Abu Bakr um, so Aisha ta'ala, is a scholar in her own right I think that's the most important thing we need to highlight right now which is that um, she was um, a scholar a person who learned much from the Messenger so there's a story for us there that our daughters ought to be educated we should aspire for our children to become scholars uh, to have prodigious memory, to have sharp wit and intellect, just like Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And so, after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, she gave us a lot of information about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, we know about a lot about his struggles, thanks to her narrations, thanks to what she mentioned. The Prophet lovingly also referred to her as, her as Humaira, um, the one with red cheeks. So that was also another name of the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. There's also sometimes fabrications. So there's a fabricated hadith that sometimes finds its way amongst us, which is that um, the Prophet is reported to have said that you should get half of your religion from this ruddy cheat, uh, Humaira. That's not really an authentic hadith, but the idea was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved her deeply and she knew the Quran very very intimately and had much knowledge of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at least 2,000 hadith um, can be traced back through Aisha radiallahu ta'ala around 
1200 can be directly transmitted through her to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so she was a woman who could not be ignored. She was a woman who was not easily silenced and she would raise her voice if she ever felt there was a need to. And of course, people both amongst the Medinan uh, Ansar and the Muhajirin had a lot of respect and love for her as well. And it was very difficult to undermine her personal authority. Um, and the Prophet often came to um, her defense um, when, if you think about the story in the Quran, where she was uh, interrogated and her chastity and moral integrity was questioned during a famous incident called the slander affair or the necklace incident or what's called the story of ifk and the story is worth reflecting upon even so briefly um, the prophet peace be upon him were traveling and as was their habit they would travel with their wives um, they had left medina the city of medina and on their way back from a campaign uh, alongside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha, for one reason or another, uh, was left behind as the caravan moved through the wilderness. Uh, and the reason we are told is that she had gone to wash in the morning, but when she returned, the caravan had already left. Um, there are some sources who will talk about how she, ha she was looking for a necklace. And when she went back to look for the necklace, she got lost. So she says herself that I checked my chest and noticed that the necklace of Yemen or Yemen beads which my mother had given me was missing. I went back to look for my necklace and missed the caravan when I came back. I never thought the men would leave without me. However, those who had mounted a litter on Camelback had failed to realize I was not in it. She says back then women were small and did not weigh much. They had little to eat. I was a small and light woman too. So I wrapped myself in my sheet and lay down, falling asleep as a hope for them to come back and get me. So she panicked as a young woman and she was all alone by herself. And so she went to sleep. And usually what would happen as the custom was, was as the caravan would move ahead, there would be people at the front, at the vanguard, and there would be the main body, which is the caravan. And there would be a slower trailing party that would stay behind, just behind the caravan. And so a young man arrived from behind the main caravan and he recognized Aisha radiallahu ta'ala because he'd obviously seen her before. So the Prophet at the time hadn't really prescribed the hijab we are told and so women didn't need to come in public just yet. Um, but he helped her to climb on his camel and delivered her home to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This seems like a innocent event, nothing too um, out of the ordinary. However, what transpired afterwards was something very, very serious and damning. And so when they saw the young man, the community, uh, or certain men saw the young man had accompanied Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha to Medina, some of them who had a grudge to uh, hold against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided to hurt or attempt to hurt the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So a rumor began to emerge that something inappropriate happened between this man and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now in our culture, in Muslim culture or Islamic culture, dishonoring a man's wife uh, and, uh, was and continues to be a grave insult. Right? We are deeply offended when people um, say anything about our sisters and that should be the way we are. The men should be real men and show muruwa, this idea of respect and dignity for women that this religion has given women such honor and dignity. Um, the Prophet wasn't too perturbed. He didn't attack her or accuse her anything. He didn't even divorce Aisha radiallahu ta'ala um, But it began to become more than a rumor. Um, and the Prophet actually used this opportunity to deliver Allah's reprimand to those who accuse women of moral transgression without proof. And this is where we get the verses about slander. This is mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, God says in the Quran, those who slander married women without producing four witnesses, flog them with 80 stripes and reject their evidence ever after. For they are wicked transgressors. In other words, in our religion, the accusation of any person is taken very, very seriously. It's not a light matter to accuse someone of impropriety. And so requiring four eyewitnesses 
for an alleged private act made it hard, really hard to make a grave accusation because we don't want to create a society or we don't want to live in a society where people are accused um, all the time of things, right? It, it loses its significance, a grave matter. And those who are accusing others, they have to be really sure of what they have seen. This is similar to what Isa alayhi salatu salam or Jesus uh, responded to when accused adulterer uh, came and they, he want, people wanted him to be condemned, people wanted him to be stoned. Nowadays, you know, people are very quickly uh, or keen to punish others and he himself said, let him who is without sin among you cast the first stone at her. Right? And that was to remind people that none of us are uh, pure. Uh, we should look at uh, people with the eyes of uh, love and affection. Um, so this was an important event. Allah then revealed these people to be hypocrites and they had bad faith with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa um, But Allah elevated through this the status of the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So when the Prophet breathed his last breath in her chamber in 632, uh, people accepted her testimony that her father should be the Khalif, the leader of the believers. Um, and so he took on the role of being someone who led the Muslim community. And she saw what had happened in life of the Prophet ﷺ. And of course now she was the widow of the Prophet and also the daughter of Abu Bakr. Uh, she continued, despite her father, to make herself heard. So she was very, very forthright. And she would sometimes dismiss or challenge what some of the companions were narrating about the Prophet ﷺ. Um, for example, um, she would sometimes question something that they could not really have heard and she would have only have heard intimately from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if we have an example, she objected when one of the companions insisted that the women ought to undo their braids and then touch their hair only with wet hands as part of the preparation for daily prayers. She scoffed at this proposition and she said, while he was at it, how come he did not require that women ought to shave their heads? So very sort of uh, in, in, you know, very ingenious answer. Like if you're going to, if you're telling us to get really to the bottom of our head, then why don't why don't you just go further and say the Prophet Sallallahu told us to um, indeed shave our heads? Um, when I then she says when I prepared myself for prayers alongside the Prophet, we used water from the same bucket in ablution, and he approved as I passed my wet hand over my braids three times without undoing them. So this is an example of how she would. Um, explain the uh, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Aisha maintained her elevated stand, standing even when her father died in 634 and he was succeeded by Umar uh, who now became someone who was going to hold the reins of the Ummah for the next decade and he hold, held her in high esteem. She was very much respected during the Caliphate of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Um, Abu Bakr was busy trying to root out uh, war, apostasy, fall, false claimants to the Prophet wasallam, people who claim to be prophets after him, people who refuse to fulfill those things which were the pillars of Islam. And so Umar came and under his leadership, Islam really spread across the Arabian Peninsula. Much wealth began to come into the Ummah and he also of course fixed the Islamic Hijri calendar. He appointed judges, may Allah be pleased with him. And he really glorified the legacy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So she was someone that was very close to Umar. May Allah be pleased with him. We know, of course, Umar was killed in 644 by someone who was disgruntled at him. And um, this person um, had unfortunately um, taken the opportunity to murder Umar radiallahu ta'ala. But Aisha radiallahu ta'ala again weighed in. And she didn't sit at the back, but she weighed in. And she offered her support to Uthman. Uh, who was another respected companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam under his auspices uh, Islam continued to spread across the Arabian Peninsula and so she was an important person who is important in the history of Islam there's also the Battle of the Camel, Battle of Sifin which we don't really want to go into right now maybe another time we'll talk about um, the importance of her involvement uh, with Ali and what happened with Talha and Zubay but that need not concern us today but just to uh, make a slight footnote that's also worthy of discussion at some point as well. But we all know that she played an important role in transmission of the life and the seed of the Prophet. She was a formidable character, 
a scholar in her own right and had a huge impact on Islamic history. May Allah be pleased with her. May Allah bless, elevate all our mothers and sisters, allow them to follow the ways of the mothers of the believers. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Once again, on this channel, we'll be providing you with content which is spiritually uplifting, intellectually stimulating, and motivational. We'll also be looking at scholars of our Islamic intellectual tradition. We'll be looking at books that have been produced by our scholars. We'll, so, we'll also be talking about the modern world and the challenges that Muslims and even non-Muslims face in a society which is really post-modern, where things seem to be a little bit different to what our ancestors might have been used to. So I hope you'll be, join me in this journey and you'll find our content very, very useful. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.